and welcome back to Sunday Score Off. Hope you're enjoying your Memorial Day weekend. Back in April, Christine Porter Marsh and five other Arizona Teachers of the Year met with Governor Doug Ducey after he signed the school voucher expansion. Marsh said she felt betrayed, devalued by that decision. Last week, Marsh announced she is leaving the classroom to run as a Democrat for the state Senate in LD28, that's Scottsdale and North Phoenix. Christine Marsh, welcome to Sunday Square Off. Thank you for having me. Uh, so was it that meeting with Governor Ducey back in April that led to this decision or was there more going on there? I think that helped. I mean, I think that pushed me in that direction, but um, I think it was the accumulation of all the destructive things that happened in this legislative session for our state's students. Now, I read your blogs over the last three years. Very interesting, and it's clear to me from reading <laughs> that you're very politically aware. So this isn't, you're not just a teacher who's suddenly getting into politics. You've been politically active, working for candidates, even bringing different candidates and elected officials into your classroom. Correct, yes. So what did you learn from all that over the years? Bringing people in. Bringing people in, just getting out, knocking on doors, working for campaigns. What have you learned about being I've a candidate? I've learned, um, well, I've learned a lot about being a candidate. I've learned how to canvas, how to pound signs in the middle of the night with a hammer walking across the road. I mean, um, so I've learned a lot about being a candidate. Um, and I think I've learned a lot about seeing the other side because when they come into my classroom, you know, it's it's got to be unbiased and I've got to watch and just listen and let kids watch and listen. So. I think I've done, um, I think I've learned a lot about seeing the opposing side and trying to understand it. And you've learned a lot from To Kill a Mockingbird. Correct. If I'm, Atticus I'm, Finch is my future husband. Your future husband, okay. Yep, and Batman. <laughs> and you're an English, English teacher, right? I'm an English teacher, yeah, correct. Okay. But what, one line from Atticus, Atticus Finch, that some battles seem, simply need to be fought. Yes. Is that the way you feel about this race? Absolutely, absolutely. We um, and we talk a lot about not in terms of politics, but when we when I deal with Atticus Finch and To Kill a Mockingbird in class, we talk about that. That sometimes you fight battles, period. No matter what the outcome might end up being, you fight that battle because it's the right thing to do. So, what are the battles you want to fight if you make it to the state senate? I'm going to start, I mean, I mean, I'm going to be focused beyond education, but clearly as a teacher, that is the front line for me. That's going to be my first like line of business, but I'm going to fight for our kids. I'm tired. I see it firsthand. I've been in the classroom for 25 years. I've seen the impact of continued budget cuts on our students with increased class sizes, et cetera. So I'm after finding some degree of I don't even know, I guess fairness for our kids. I think that our kids are not being treated appropriately. And so money is in the center of every conversation, it seems. How would you work to find more money for public education? It's there. If you there. saw the Arizona Schools Now budget, I mean, it's there. There were, there were places that money could have been spent differently. I don't appreciate our budget priorities at all. 35 or 36 million going to results-based funding, for example, that should have been put into teacher's salary. And I know that seems self-serving, but really it's because we have such a teacher retention problem. We've got too many kids in classrooms without a teacher in it. So there, there is money that can be moved around. I've so seen you think, it. you think the money's there, we don't need a tax increase or anything like that? Well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't go that far. I don't know. I don't know enough about a tax increase. I really don't. Okay. But I will be educating myself. But there's definitely money there to be spent more appropriately. It's already there without if, taxes. If you make it to the November ballot, you'd be facing incumbent state senator Kate Brophy McGee, regarded Correct. as a moderate Republican, especially on education issues. How would you do a better job than she can, especially if you end up in the minority in the Senate? Well, I'm hoping to not end up in the minority. I mean, let's be clear on that. Uh, the bottom line is um, they weren't able to stop anything. They weren't able, I will be voting for a different Senate president. Um, I will never be voting for any voucher bills. I will never be voting for any expansion of STOs. I will not be voting for things like lowering teaching standards like the decertification bill that went through this last legislative session. I mean. There, I, I will be education friendly, period, 100% of the time. All right. Got to end it there. Christine Marsh, thanks so much for joining us. Best of luck. Thank you.
Coming up next, what we don't know about the grunts who served and sacrificed their lives in Vietnam. Stay with us.